What's up team? Today I'm going to show you guys how to draw a logo within Procreate and then vectorize it using Illustrator for your clothing brand. So let's go ahead and get locked in. All the dimensions, max this out. So 3000 by 3000 pixels, DPI at a 300 resolution. I'm going to be making a mascot style logo inspired by those vintage college references. Now the brand name is Bullhog, so I'm going to be creating a hog. And the first thing I want to do is go into this little spanner icon and then go ahead and turn on drawing guide, edit drawing guide, go over to symmetry and keep it as is, press done. And I'm gonna be using the studio pen. There we go, nice and thin. And then I can go ahead and just start sketching. I have my references up here, by the way. So that's why I keep looking up because my references are on my computer. We're gonna start with a head shape, something similar to this. And then we can start roughing in our idea for ears. And we only need to draw one side because it has a symmetry. Next, let's go ahead and draw in what I would say is some eyes. And I'm gonna go ahead and arch in a nose. And I'm gonna add in some nostrils and add in a mouth real quick. There we go. I'm gonna add some tusks. I'm gonna add in, you know, some details in relation to that. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some more detail that I'm gonna ink in later on. Go ahead and add in. Mm, I think it looks more aggressive about pupils. I think this is a good idea of what this logo is going to be. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add in a new layer on top. And this time, I'm going to be using a studio pen. And the stabilization amount, I'm going to bring this up a bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this to a black. And I'm going to go ahead and change the size so it's a lot larger. This new layer that I added, I'm going to click on it and make sure I have drawing assist on. And I can go ahead and start inking in our logo. Now we want that sort of vintage like ink pen look and that requires two line works to sort of get that, that effect. So we're gonna start with the outside line work and I'm gonna make this thing hairy. There we go. And now the second line work is going to be the detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and go like this. Add in that detail. Mm. There we go. So now you can see what I mean. We have the inside inking and then we have the outside lining. And then basically we're gonna be filling in that layer in between. So let's just go ahead and continue lining. Let's go ahead and add our inking. Lovely. Now that we have that ink, we can go ahead and turn this layer off. And again, just go in with our fill and just fill that inside layer. You can see it's starting to take shape now. And we'll just do it for something here too. We'll do it for here. And we'll also do it for here. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a rubber just to remove all these little dots that I think occurred when I was moving around my artboard to line it. We have the inking of our logo complete. Now, if you just have access to Illustrator, this is more than enough to add on to projects like t-shirts and stuff like that. But if you want to make it, you know, a bit more of a universal design where you can add it to multiple things, I would go ahead and export it into Illustrator. And then from there, start adding detail that way. I'm gonna go ahead and share this as a PNG to my laptop my laptop and then we're gonna go ahead and switch over and start working illustrator so now that we're in um now that we're on our computer or desktop where we can access illustrator i'm gonna go ahead and just drag that design that we got as a png from our ipad into this illustrator file and then from here i'm gonna to go to windows image i'm gonna to go to window image trace and I'm going to select our image and I'm going to press preview so we can see what we're actually doing as we're using image trace. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and up the paths by a lot. Noise, I'm going to keep it as so because I don't want any of the white showing from our mistaken fill 
from before and I'm going to press ignore color. Now we have our design kind of vectorized. We can go and go object, expand, and then bam, we have a vector of our graphic. This is a full scale vector that you can scale as much as you want without having to worry. And what I love about this is you can get line work to of your design just by adding a stroke, which looks extremely sick because of the effect and the way that we made our design to begin with. But let's just keep it as a normal fill. I'm gonna show you how to color this. You can color this two ways and let's separate it. So firstly, the way of coloring I would go about is live paint bucket. So live paint bucket allows you to color it, but it keeps it um, as an active object while you're coloring. So you can go ahead and change it fairly easily. Uh, let's just say we want an orange sort of graphic something like this. Um, and with Live Paint Bucket, you can go ahead and go Live Paint Bucket Selection, and you can select it and make the color whatever you want as well, which is extremely sick. I love Live Paint Bucket, and it's 99.9% .9 the way I color things when I'm using Illustrator. Now, the amateur way or the old way I used to color things in Illustrator before I, help, before I was very much rude awoken and told that this is the wrong way is I used to use shape build. So I would build different shapes with colors and it's the same, I guess, premise. You select the image and then you go in with the shape builder tool. They're in the same area and you just fill your area with the color. But the bad thing is you're creating new shapes. So let's say you have a very detailed drawing and you want to color it live paint bucket tool would be the option instead of using shape builder because as you're building shapes you're putting more strain on your ram on your computer and it makes it slow and that's something that i had to deal with again the shape builder tool to change colors is fairly easy you just you just use direct selection and then you select whatever you want to change and then you change the color so either way works perfectly but it just depends what you're trying to achieve and again that's how you Make your design in Procreate, transform it to Illustrator, and then vectorize it for production. You could paint directly within Procreate, but then you run the risk of having a um, pixel-based graphic, which if you scale it, it gets warped. If you lose uh, the final or if you lose the original and you scale the graphic, you can't go back because that design is done. But with the Illustrator, because it's vectors, you can make it as small, as large as possible and not have to worry about any of that. Hope you guys enjoy that video. I'll see you guys tomorrow.